All right. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to do my customary uh, prov prov provocate? Provoc provocating? Provocating. I think provocating is the word. Just like uh, chit-chatting for a little bit while I wait to make sure that YouTube is good and Twitch wants me to buy a PlayStation. Uh, that's actually much better branding than a Nerf gun for me. Uh, excellent. Hello. Welcome back. I know it's been a minute since I streamed. I was very sick. Uh, I had really bad laryngitis and I compl completely lost my voice for four days. Um, so unfortunately I had to miss the Open Science Big Data workshop because of that, which I am really bummed about. But uh, I'm feeling better now and I'm back in the saddle. Um, and yeah, let's get into it. So today is a little bit of a little sneaky preview. Uh, next week is the Dashboarding with Notebooks event, and I will be uh, streaming every morning at 9 a.m. my time, Pacific time, uh, for that. So feel free to tune in then. Uh, so we won't have a, have a reading group on Wednesday because we'll be doing the event. Um, and one thing that I've been thinking about is the, the sorts of dashboards that might be a little bit less uh, commonly used. Uh, and something that um, sort of came to me was that, uh, so I think it's very common to use dashboards for time series, of course, we all do that, uh, for mapping and, and sort of like that type of visualization, but it's a little bit less common to use them for uh, NLP tasks. And uh, there's a, a number of things that I do in my day to day that I could sort of speed up and help automate by by leaning a little bit more heavily on NLP uh, and one of them is I read all the Kaggle forums except for the competition forums every day so I read every new post um, which is fine and um, I'm happy to do that but it would be helpful for me if before I start going through posts I could sort of have like a little quick peek and be like oh okay here's the things that were um, you know the the most prominent topics or if there was a bug it would be really easy to see you know quickly that oh there's a new topic that people are suddenly talking about and probably we should check this. So I've actually done a little bit of EDA already and I've done a little bit of thinking about what this would look like. Uh, so I will walk you through. Uh, so actually, first of all, I should tell you what data this is on. Uh, I also realized for my uh, <laughs> RNN sarcasm detection project, I did that really bad, y'all. I didn't do any like exploratory analysis. I didn't like look at the class balance, um, which is partially because I was initially going to do it on a competition and I ran into some technical issues. So I didn't end up doing that. Uh, so I didn't do the due diligence that we do as a part of putting together a competition. So my apologies there. Uh, but I'm using the MetaCaggle data set for this, which if you're not familiar is a data set that we publish and we update every day, um, containing public data on, you know, what's up on Kaggle. Um, so we've got information on competitions, if you want to check that out, or uh, different data sets. So information on the data sets themselves, and then also the different versions and the, the actual files that people upload and information on those. Um, and forums, which are the things that I'm most interested in. Um, and the, the thing that I want to build is a little topic model that tells me about new topics that are coming up so that I can have a little heads up about those. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still, I'm still a little bit phlegmy, so I might, uh, do some quick mutes to, uh, get rid of that at, at various points through today. Uh, we also have information on kernels, so if that's something that you wanted to, to check out. We don't have, I believe, the, the text of the kernels as part of MetaCaggle, um, but we do have information on, you know, the languages that they're in and uh, various information about that. So, uh, and I'm actually getting a little bit of lag, so I'm going to pause Twitch. So I'm not streaming two things in and one things out. Uh, and yeah, just with all sorts of different information that you can you can look at, and I'm going to be looking at the forums here. Uh, and as I said, this is updated every day. Hmm, where are the versions? I thought the versions were at the bottom of the data tab. I guess not. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Well, anyway, in here somewhere you can see sort of each of the the versions uh, that have have been uploaded. Um, Oh, here it is. It's in the activity feed, but there's so much other activity you can't see just the the, the updates. Uh, anyway, so this is what I've done so far, and this has been in R. 
Uh, and I'm just using the form topic, so I'm only looking at the uh, topic line rather than the whole forum text, just because there's a lot of forum posts and I want this to be fairly fast to run. Um, and let's see, so I did a little bit of filtering, so I take um, uh, only comments that are on the forums on the site, on the discussions, uh, and not ones that are on uh, kernels, because comments and kernels also show up in the, uh, the forum topics thing. Uh, and I look for uh, ones where the creation date is today, whatever today date is, uh, minus one, and it's greater than that. So it happened today or yesterday. Um, and the, the today function is from a luber date. And when you minus one, it knows that it's a day, um, which is really nice. L luber date and the tiny version general just have just really nice functionality. Uh, and then I am looking for something that has some interaction. So someone has upvoted it, someone has replied to it, um, or someone has, you know, done a, another message. So it's not just one person saying something, because that's if more people are talking about something, um, it's more likely that that's going to be something important. Uh, and then I'm so sorting by the number of total replies. So yesterday we only had, it looks like, one thing that fulfilled that, uh, and this was no way to revert back to previous version, uh, and that was from the 14th. So this one was actually from today. Uh, and no one's upvoted it, but there's been some some messages and replies. So there's been some activity on this one. Uh, and then I did the dumbest possible <laughs> uh, topic modeling approach. Um, and what I did was I created this word frequency list that was um, all of the titles. Um, and then I split it into individual words. Uh, I removed stop words, English stop words from get stop words. And I think the default there is the Bing corpus stop words, maybe? Uh, Ryan said, is this data updated daily? Yes, it is. It is updated daily. Um, we have a number of data sets that we maintain that are updated daily, um, but this one is our data. <laughs> uh, it may surprise you to know that uh, we do quite a bit of analysis on you know, our data that, that is on our site. I, I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. Um, and we, we track metrics like you know number of new users that sign up and activity and how many people enter competitions and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so we're moving stop words, I think, from the Bing list. Um, and then I am getting the frequency of each word, and I am sorting by frequencies. The most frequent words are on the top. And then I remove unique words, um, so things that only show up once. And that's going to be the majority of words in any relatively small corpus, and this is a relatively small corpus. Um, the technical term for a word that only shows up for once in a corpus is, I believe, hapex legomenon. So there's a trivia fact for that. Um, and then I do the same thing, but just with the words from today. Uh, and then I have this measure of surprise. Um, so this is just telling me about, about the join. Uh, and let's take a look at these so you can sort of see what I'm talking about. So if I look at today's words, there's none. Uh, oh, that's right, because I only had one post. Uh, n yes, so I only had one post. I removed the uh, stop words. So the, um, uh, uh, let's actually make this the last week. There we go. Okay, so I removed the stop words um, and things that only um, happened once and once you remove the stop words and all the words that only happen once you are ending up with zero words so let's rerun this real quick and then look at today's words um so you can see that people said data a lot they said kernel a lot they said kaggle a lot they said kernels a lot they said python a lot um but these are words that are also um used a lot in Kaggle in general. So if people are just talking about Python on Kaggle, that's not super surprising because a lot of people use Python on Kaggle. Or if people are just talking about data on Kaggle, that's not surprising because people uh, talk about data on Kaggle because it's a, the, it's, a top, it's a word that's very closely associated with the topics on Kaggle. 
Um, and what I'm doing here is, well, let's just do the, this little, this little bit and take a look at that. Oop. Let's look at the head. Um, so we have this measure of surprise, which is the number of times it occurred today divided by the number of times it occurred ever. So if a word is very common, um, it's going to have a lower surprise because it's occurred more commonly overall, and you're going to need to see it more times today for it to be more surprising. But if a very word is very uncommon and we see it a lot today, it takes a lot less to make that surprising. So you can see the least, the most surprising word here, the word with the highest surprise value, is kernels, which in the entire corpus has only occurred 544 times, and today it showed up six times, or this week it showed up six times, which is much more surprising than seeing data 16 times because we usually see data about 10 times as much as we see kernels. And these are, these are words in the, uh, in the form topics, if that makes sense. So our, our surprisal measure is basically um, of a function of how often we see the word today and how often we see the word ever. And then I just pick an arbitrary number to remove really common words. So data, kernel, Kaggle, <laughs> Python, things that people talk about a lot. I just picked a, a threshold to get rid of it. Um, so we're only looking at things that happen more than a thousand times in the total corpus. Uh, and then we've arranged them by surprise descending. So the most surprising words are first. Um, so if we look at surprisingly common words, stoop. Uh, you can see the most surprising word today is solved, uh, or sorry, this week, followed by existing metals, hours, the number six, uploading. Um, and this is from uh, somebody talking about uh, their kernel was running for more than six hours and they were confused about that. So that was a, a forum post that had a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of discussion and that's a surprising thing to be talking about on Kaggle because people don't usually talk about six hours a lot, if that makes sense. So this is just like a dumb way of doing it. It's it's fairly hacky, but I think it, it gets you there. Let's tidy this up. We don't actually need to de do this now that I've uh, I've talked about this. Um, and then I did, again, the dumbest possible way. I have just a bunch of empty text cells in here. Um, and I go through each of the surprisingly common words um, and I print the um, uh, um, the word and then the form titles that it shows up in. Uh, Jason Biak says, hi, Rachel. Hi. Oh, goodness. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oof. Uh, and this is going to be fairly large because I had a lot of common words. Um, so we can see... Hmm. That's not right. So we can see uh, we have solved this very common word that doesn't show up in any of the titles. So that's sort of interesting. Um, post last day. Is that where we changed our... Yeah, no, that's where we changed it. And we did run it because we can see them. Hmm. Uh, so people said existing a lot. Uh, we got two of those. It always says error when uploading my submission. How to protect next data from existing data in Python. Uh, we can see people talking about metals. Can I earn metals on closed competition? How long does it take for metals to appear in discussions? Uh, hours, run more than six hours, running more than six hours. Um, six, six hours, six hours, and this this thing that just happens to to say six. Um, yeah, so you can you can see each of the topics associated with these surprising words. Um, yeah, I think actually a week is too much data. I think it would be better to have. Uh, no, I have to have my mouse in the right place. It's cool. Uh, I think it would be better to have the last three days. Yeah, interesting. Um, so the top couple ones are, are talking about 
a competition, best AI. Anyway, um, so again, the dumbest way. Um, and it, like, it works okay. It definitely tells you some things. So here we can see once we're looking at just the last three days, we can see medals, we can see congratulations. Uh, we can see download, how to download data, download notebooks of Python script. We can see deep, how to start deep learning with R. Um, and then we can see something else about scripts. But these aren't really topics, these are single words. And topics are collections of words. So I think this is sort of a good start, um, but I think we can do better. So that's what I'm gonna do today in the remaining three quarters, now that I've spent most of the time talking about stuff I already did. Uh, not very good live coding to just show you code I already wrote. So, uh, something that got me thinking is my uh, friend Tyler, uh, that's Tyler, wrote a uh, blog post that I, I tweeted about on um, the most uh, surprising new words from uh, uh, Neurips 2018. So things that were uh, more common this year than they were last year. And that just uh, wrapped up in Montreal. Uh, Ryan says, LDA time. Yes, that was my thanks. Uh, and he used a method, so it wasn't quite LDA, but it is related. Um, weighted log odds informative Dirichlet prior. So uh, Dirichlet is also the D in LDA, latent Dirichlet analysis, um, which I had not previously used, but it sounded interesting. Um, so what I did is what I usually do when I find a new method that I'm interested in. Uh, and I went to GitHub and I just searched for it um, to see who else has written code for this that I can then use. Um, and there are a couple things and it looks like they're all in Python. So we're going to need to switch to Python. Um, so there's this one and the, the paper was from 2009 and it looks like this is from 2013 and this could be from, uh, let's take a look. So this could be from, uh, Dan's class at Stanford. Um, blah, 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 assume all three inputs. Hmm. Okay. So this feels like a homework assignment, uh, especially cause there's several people that have done it. Uh, with the same sort of sort of text. So I'm guessing that this is a, uh, a homework assignment from Stanford NLP course. Um, and this is a little bit more hands-on than I want to be, although it, it could work uh, fine. Uh, and the method itself um, uh, I sort of skimmed the paper. Uh, Ryan says, Dan Drafsky is an NLP champ. His book is very good. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is. Uh, also one of the, I don't, I don't want to say few NLP people like hang out with linguists, but he does hang out with linguists, which is really nice. And he's a co-author on speech and language processing that we read in the reading group, a chapter out of a couple weeks ago. Uh, uh, let's just read the abstract. Blah, 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 blah. Variety of techniques for selecting words that capture partisan or other differences in political speech and for evaluating the relative importance of those words. So they are, so this is also a single word based method and looking at sort of the most uh, discriminative words given uh, to input groups. Uh, and it also looks like, uh, the only model based method discussed that does not rely on a large in domain background corpus. Um, so it also looks like, uh, Jason Kessler has, um, done some implementation of this in, uh, the scatter text package. So... Let's check out this notebook because I think this is going to be very informative for us. Um, and Jason, hmm, I've met him in Seattle. I don't know if he's from Seattle necessarily. Yeah, he must be because he gave this at Puppy, um, which is a Seattle area meetup. So uh, another Seattle peep. Uh, and type error. <laughs> 
Uh, so this may or may not ring, uh, may or may not run if we uh, import this. Uh, and the input here is, so the text is the entire script maybe? I don't entirely know what this is. Uh, and then it's the movie name and the category name. So for this we could have uh, the text could be the text of the forum title and then um, the movie name could be, the, so if we were using the same data structure, it could be the forum that it's from and then the category name could be, you know, today or before that. Uh, Jason says, LDA is discussed in David Robinson's and Joya Silge's text mining book in R. It is. Um, and they have also built uh, a method for it, uh, which is really nice in, uh, in tidy text. Uh, okay, so we're making a corpus from pandas and then doing some visualizations. Scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down scrolling down except there's no output so that's a problem i think that we should be seeing what is it one sec is this just defining it or is it no okay yeah this actually is supposed to be writing something but we don't see it so it's not writing so it's supposed to be producing a figure but we don't see a figure uh so this may or not be very helpful Let's see if, are there any figures in this notebook? Do any of them render well? And this could be just one of those things. Invalid value entered in log bigram probability for word bigram split. Uh, okay, so it looks like there's some word that is empty here and that's causing a problem. Uh, naive approach number three, but these are also approaches that are not as good. So we can hopefully ignore them and the fact that they have a lot of errors. <laughs> Uh, smooth log dollars ratio z-score preferred in certain cases uh, and mcq is this paper here uh, the lexical feature selection paper that tyler referred to it's a it's a small world we all read the same things all right so i've got some tea for the throat all right uh the thing is, because so my, so my thinking is that this will be a dashboard, and for a dashboard you want a nice little visualization you can just sort of glance at and get nice and informative uh, information from. And at the moment, okay, okay, so we do have at least one dashboard. Uh, and scatter text is a package for making really beautiful visualizations, so I will be sad if we don't get a really beautiful visualization somewhere in this notebook. But we are almost to the end. Uh, and so this is looks like it's comparing different methods of um, uh, ranking terms within groups. But I am seeing so far beautiful pictures, none. Yeah, all right. So it looks like uh, none of these figures have rendered, which, hmm. We could play with, but there's also errors, which makes me worried. Mm. And it's fairly big, and we only need one thing. So let's uh, let's just check out scatter text uh, and see if we can find a small demo. Japanese logs odd ratio prior. All right, that's what we're interested in. Um, so, so this will be from the Rotten Tomatoes sample corpora. Okay, so we could pretty much plug and play here, I am thinking, um, once we read our, all right, um, once we read our data in to pandas. So let's start a new kernel. Uh, and start in Python, because this is all in Python and uh, before I was working in R. You know what, I would go whole hog on Python if the tidyverse as is was imported and a uh, future updates to the tidyverse were also imported. It's just, it's so handy. It's so handy. Uh, 
Uh, more tea. Okay. Uh, I don't actually know that we have tidy text imported, so let's give this the old college try and see if it'll run. Oh, you know what would help is if I don't need that, I actually ran this cell. So. All right, it's thinking. Oh, and we can get rid of this as well. We don't need any of that. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so we have saved out a file. So let's open the console. I'm just checking our working directory and see what we have. Okay, so we do have a file here. Uh, and I'm just going to cat that really quickly to take a look at it. Oh. Well, tab complete doesn't work, so that's something. Uh, Ryan says, doesn't Anaconda fill similar niche to Tidyverse? Um, not really. The thing that I like is that it's just really well designed. Uh, there's just a lot of methods that make it uh, really nice to use and solve problems for you. Uh, hmm. Well... That's certainly something. Okay, so it's created a figure. Um, this looks like Jason for a whole figure that I'm sure is beautiful, but I cannot see it. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Um, let's see. Scatter text image notebooks. Uh, scatter text scale for notebook version of the analysis. All right. Let's let's look at a notebook that works and then see if we can uh, notebook. Uh, see if we can get it to work. Okay, so here's notebook viewer. All right, we're importing stuff that's normal. It's oh my gosh, it's loading slowly. Ugh. No, I just oh no, I want to scroll down. Ugh. Okay, well I can't scroll down, so we're just gonna wait for it to load, and then I'll be able to scroll down hopefully. Um, loading math jacks. That might take a minute. <sighs> okay. Oh, I can scroll. There's just a lot of lag. Uh, yeah, so we're going to see if we can get this to be visible. And if it does show up in this notebook viewer, then I will uh, snag the code, which I'm assuming this is what will show me. This will show me just the rock code. I don't know if he will have hidden the code or not. It's thinking. Anyway, uh, the thing that I was hoping for here uh, is there's some really beautiful, um, I think there might be some in here that are a good representation. There's some really beautiful, uh, here you go. There's some really beautiful sort of visualizations you can do where you can say, oh, here's the things that, you know, so this is um, probably Democrats and Republicans. Uh, but the, the thing that I want is I want the same sort of visualization, but I want the top to be topics that are talking about right now and the bottom to be topics that we're not talking about that we have been talking about in the past. Uh, I think that would be a useful thing to do. Oh, it's still thinking. Oof. All right. Oh, mmm. Mmm. Just gonna try and find something else maybe. That looks like that's maybe not gonna work for us really great. Um, but I like this is the type of visualization that I want because I think this is a really nice way of, of showing words. Uh, hmm. All right, it's got to text Pi Data because I remember at Pi Data he had some really nice notebooks. Uh, 
but the notebooks I've seen so far don't actually have the pretty pictures on it. And if you don't have pretty pictures, what's the point? All right. Math, math, math. A nice table, but I want a picture. Show me a picture. All right, we're seeing ranked words. This is useful. I like I can use this. I just again, mm, again, no picture. Uh, so this might be one of those things that's just a problem with HTML and iframe and um, visualizations in uh, Jupyter notebooks in particular. And that's a, uh, a series of headaches that is in Jupyter Corp. And um, like mad, mad props to the Jupyter Core developers. I'm in no way trying to like throw shade. Um, it's hard and I couldn't do it. And I appreciate that they do do it, but mm, this is going to be maybe a bit of a problem for us. Hmm. Well, let's try playing around a little bit and see if we can't get it. Because I was hoping that I could find an example that just would work. Um, but I, what happens if we just ask for the priors? Could I have typed priors instead of pasting priors? Yes. Okay, so this is uh, boy diesel. Diesel with. Hmm. Okay, so this is the uh, priors for the something in Rotten Tomatoes, in movie scripts, in reviews, presumably reviews. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, something in the movie scripts. These are the priors. Okay. And then we want to do a frequency explorer. So what if we just do this bit? What will that give us? Will that make a visualization we can look at with our eyes? Uh, unexpected under frequency. Yeah, that would do it, huh? So uh, the reason I'm trying to do this is that sometimes you can get the HTML to render the widget and whoa, oh, mm, okay, that didn't work. Um, sometimes you can get it to render in uh, the editor, but not in the notebook. And um, absolutely it did not. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. All right, I have one more thing I can try. Um, play, playing with scatter text. So the next thing I'm gonna have to do is just sort of give up on scatter text and try something else. I haven't actually played around with it before, but I've seen some really gorgeous visualizations out of it that I would like. I want those visualizations. Ah, more tea. Ooh. I can tell my voice is starting to get a little bit rougher again. It's fine though. I'm not in pain or anything. All right, so my thinking is, uh, because we wrote a file, where was it? No, I do, I wanna, I wanna scroll. Um, right down here where you can't see what it is. Uh, why can't I scroll? Well, I can't scroll, uh, but right here below where it says open fn, uh, WB, uh, it's, writing something to an HTML file. And when we committed it, we created an output. Uh, and this should create an HTML file that we might be able to view here in a preview. Okay, so this is still just straight up HTML. So I'm gonna try downloading it and opening it and see if that works. I want to see the visualization, man. Because you can see, so this is the mm, CSS uh, to make the visualization. So I know somewhere it exists. 
uh, like this is all the code for it. I just want to see the actual thing. Okay, okay. This is uh, a good start. Do I, need to, do I need to type a word? So it looks like it's still loading. It's thinking. I don't know if you guys can see, I'll zoom in a little bit. So up here it says search for term, type a word or two. Ooh, so I had a minute where it said page unresponsive. Uh, and now I can see it and it's really lovely and interactive. Okay, so that did work. Uh, <laughs> MangoDB said, just turn it into an image in your mind. Um, if my CSS were that good, I probably wouldn't be a data scientist. <laughs> uh, awesome. Okay, so that worked. It didn't not work. Let me put it that way. Um, it is kind of some hoops to jump through, but also really nice. So I think it's worth jumping through the hoops. Um, I wish I could get it to render in the notebook, but I don't think I know enough about HTML and the Jupyter backend to get that to work. So what I'm going to do instead is um, we're going to go back and do the same thing, uh, but with data from the, oh, I don't actually have a data source in this kernel, uh, data from uh, Metacaggle and see if we can get the same oop, uh, thing, but instead of up being uh, happy reviews, um, being not happy, but being positive reviews and down being uh, negative reviews, uh, it should look good. Ooh, Ryan says, uh, has a link when I will pull up here. Uh, I did this with Plotly Plots. Oh, oh, let's try this out. Will it crash our notebook? Maybe, let's find out. Weep. All right. Uh, so that is what's going to produce the HTML, that code right there. Uh, from IPython core display import HTML, HTML display. Oh, okay. I don't know. I um, hit tab after that and it put some percentage signs in and I don't know what that is. That seems like a magic. Uh, so what if I give you this? What if I give you all of the HTML? Just in that, or do I have to say display? Let's see. Uh, or Python multi-line cell alias, which return a formatted link. Okay, okay, I see, I see. I should probably take the code from the answer and not the question, huh? That would be a good choice, probably. Uh, okay, so let's try this instead. Uh, and the HTML that we will be displaying is all of that. So I was just uh, looking to make sure that I had the right number of parentheses in there, and I think I do. Okay, let's find out if this works. Named ST not defined. Oh, right, 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 after we redo this. Oop. It's gonna take a minute because it's taking in the whole corpus and it is creating this scatter text object, scatter text corpus object from it. Uh, so let's see if this works. <laughs> uh, Ryan says, if it kills the kernel, I am not liable. I know what I did. It's, you know, it's containerized, it's fine. All right, it ran. JavaScript error, adding output. Reference error, D3 is not defined. See your browser JavaScript console for more details. 
cool. Okay. Um, that's not something that should happen. Uh, well, um, I don't know how we did that, but that definitely seems like a bug. Let's try, let's try refreshing the kernel real quick. Yeah, I would hope they wouldn't be saved. So that was fun. Hopefully we can fix it with a quick refresh. All right. Um, all right, so an accidental exploit find on stream. I don't know what the exploit would be. I mean, it's uh, we have our nice environment over, over default Jupiter. I guess if you really, really want to default Jupiter very bad, you could do it that way. Um, but I don't know what you get from that, because um, I guess... Well, I think the main thing that people don't like about non-default Jupiter is that um, shortcuts don't work, but shortcuts work in kernels, so... Shrug. Um, yeah, so the thing that I am thinking, based on this, is that we might actually be able to import D3, and maybe that would work, because that did seem like a fairly informative error. Uh, let's get that error again for us. Think, 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 think. Uh, reference error D3 is not defined. I'm trying not to get that uh, vanilla Jupyter console anymore. All right, has anyone else run into this? Uh, I'm trying to use a fancy graph. No knowledge of D3, dimension, HTML. Uh, download the scripts, place in the same folder as your files, and change the reference path in your sources. Uh, it worked when I added the care set to the script tag as shown below. Oh, mm, nope, this is this is more than I want to do. I'm, I'm choosing not to do this. <laughs> Uh, Ryan says, my workaround would be to copy and paste the entire D3 code in there. Haha. -ha. Yeah, um, that's an idea. I'm not going to do that. Uh, but yeah, if some of y'all wanted to play around with that, feel free. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to call that. I don't think we're going to get much further with this particular, uh, uh, what am I looking for? I don't think we're going to get much f f further with this particular line of reasoning. Uh, so, hmm. So what I'm thinking is, what's going to be more work? So one thing that I could do is I could go through and um, sit down and spend some time with the math and figure out the way to do the log odds ratio informative dear clay prior myself in R, unless someone has done it in R, but I don't think I saw when I was doing my little my little GitHub dive, I don't think I saw anyone talking about it in R. I think it was all in Python. So I'm going to have to do the math myself. Uh, dot text prior JSON Python. Uh, that's using scatter text as well. This is just somebody citations. That's Python. That is Python. Um, I'm not seeing anything in just R. So I'm going to have to do the math for it if I do it in R, but it's going to be much easier for me to do a nice looking visualization. Yeah. Uh, but if I do the math in Python, I can just use the scatter text math and that'll be nice. And I won't have to re-implement anything, but I am going to have to do the visualization and I don't like the Python visualization libraries. What, Rachel, none of them? No, none of them. None of them are as good as ggplot. And I know there's a ggplot fork, but it's um, really out of date. And I don't think it's being actively maintained. Whew. Hmm. Well, hmm. The better option might be, uh, Ryan says, Plotly is best. I mean, 
Plotly is neither an R nor a Python package. It's something else. But there's there's wrapper options in both languages. Right? I'm assuming. I don't think it's written in, in Python, is it? No, I'm getting distracted. Back on back on uh, on track. Yeah, see it's you know, it's available in in many different uh, uh, many different languages. Um Will says, with Articulate, you can run the model in Python from within R, then you can just use R to plot the results. That's true. That's true. The likelihood that Reticulate's going to fail silently in a weird way with scatter text, though, is I feel kind of high. Mm. It's JavaScript and works for both. Yes, thank you, Ryan. Or we could just go back to here and do LDA instead, and that might be more helpful. And if we're doing LDA, well, the thing is, so the problem with LDA is you do need to say how many topics you think you need a priori. Um, and sort of the way around that is to uh, try a bunch of different numbers of topics and see which one is best. Um, Xavier on YouTube says, hi, I just got here. What are you using for topic modeling, LDA? Um, I had been using a very <laughs> sort of dumb uh, measure of surprisal that is number of times it's occurred in today. So we were looking for topics that are new for today. Um, number of things that occurred today versus number of things that occurred um, over the history that we're looking at. Um, and then getting rid of very common words overall. So th th actually this filtering is basically like my stop word list that's Kaggle specific. Um, but that's not necessarily, we could, we could have a more sophisticated option. Um, yeah, so we're thinking maybe LDA. Um, I mean, I've already got tidy text loaded in, so I might as well. Uh, and Ryan says, uh, we were talking about Plotly on, on Twitch and Ryan says, just saying it's a valid Python option for interactive cool stuff. That's true. That's true. Although, uh, unfortunately with Plotly, a lot of the same, um, HTML widget problems that scatter text is running into are, well, I don't know that they're the same problems, but I do know that I have had some problems with them. So take that as you will. Um, yeah, let's try some, some LDA. I think that's a good good second uh, option. Uh, Ryan says, for the first project I did using LDA, I was analyzing tweets in Las Vegas, and one of the topics is found was diaper Las Vegas. Confused, I did a little bit of searching, and it turns out someone lost a bet and was buying, wearing a diaper on Las Vegas Boulevard. <laughs> Noted. Yeah, that's certainly um, something I would notice if someone were doing. Um, yeah, I think, so we could do... Um, so the two sort of big topic modeling options are um, TF-IDF to frequency inverse document frequency, but that only works if you have um, uh, topic labels. And the other is latent Dirichlet analysis, LDA, uh, not uh, linear discriminant analysis. That's a different LDA used in the same sort of zone, but they mean different things, um, which finds uh, it's basically like clustering for for words, and it's an unsupervised. So if you're doing unsupervised methods, so if you're doing topic discovery, which is what I'm doing here, LDA is a better choice. Um, and I've dropped my glasses. I'm gonna put them back on. There we go. Much clearer. Yeah, so let's do some LDA. And I'm going to tidy text LDA. Pull up the tidy text book. I think this is the tidy text book. Yeah, there we go. Uh, scroll, 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 scroll. There we go. Um, just so I can find their example code and then I will copy and then modify it because that's how coding works. Uh, underscore LDA uh, tiling model objects model for extracting the per object per word blah, blah, blah. 
Oh, okay, I see. Uh, so here we are using, yeah, but the thing is we don't really need to do topic modeling. Hmm. Okay. So sorry. I'm, I'm just sort of, I'm just sort of, sort of thinking because the thing that we're looking at are forum topics, which are already topics. So they've like, they've been human, humanly condensed from the, uh, uh, from the, the text of the forum post itself. So this, these are topics that we are given. So the thing that is most important for me is not actually topic model. Okay. So just, sorry, you gotta, you gotta take a second and sort of like figure out what you actually want. Like, what's the good question that I'm asking? The question that I'm asking is, are people suddenly talking about something they weren't talking about before? So my measure of surprisal measures new words that people are bringing up, which does tell you if people are using words that they haven't used before more often than they would just by chance. I mean, I'm not including a measure of chance. Uh, and then the other thing that I'm interested in is, are is there a certain amount of overlap between topics? Because if people are pasting, or if people are posting on the same topic five or six times, or five or six different people are posting on the same topic, then that suggests to me that something's going on that I want to know about as an employee. So I think actually topic modeling is not the thing that I'm interested in. I think I'm looking in text-based deduplication. Or I'm, I'm looking for duplicate. So I'm looking for duplicate topics within a certain amount of, of wiggle. Yeah, so I don't think actually topic modeling is what I want to do. I want a sort of textual similarity measure instead. Hmm. Oh, uh, Xavier says, I always feel bad for copying and adapting the same line of code for my problem. Is it okay as a professional data scientist? Uh, and Doom Kedu says, I think, yeah, if it's open source. Um, yeah, that's a complicated question. I think it depends. Um, if you are using the exact same line of code, then it's going to depend on the license that the code is released under. Um, but it's sort of like, is there just one way to do things um, as opposed to, is this something that required some creativity and, you know, personal choice? And if there's just one way to do things, then it's fine to just copy and paste because that's the only way to do it. But if there's a, a sort of an element of creativity, then the person has more like claim. I'm not a lawyer. How's that for an answer? This is a law question for a law person, and that ain't me. Um, but yes, I think the, I don't think there's a current case about this. There actually probably there is. Um, but best practices are don't copy and paste into general. How's that? <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. Um, this, is a, this is a topic for another time. Okay, so I am looking for a measure of text similarity, uh, and I don't actually know. Hmm. What about just similarity? Help me out. Hmm. I'm not getting back any results. Hmm. Okay. Uh, our text similarity measures. Uh, Xavier says word embeddings. Yeah. Yeah, this might be a place for sentence embeddings. Uh, there we go. Document similarity. Uh, or distance between documents is one of the central themes in information retrieval. Uh, how similar documents are text to vec and this is a similarity between each row matrix x parallel similarity distance to similarity um ryan says sound like you want to find trending topics and then summarize them and eliminate topics that are highly overlapping uh 
Yeah, I think actually the thing that I most want is to know if nearly the same thing has been said more than once. That's the thing that's most important to me, because if people make two forum posts on the same topic, then that suggests that that's very important. Um, or, hmm. Is it more important that two people made the same form post or is it more important that no i think you're right i think i want to dedupe and then have some measure of interaction across all of the topics all of the posts on the same topic um so if i'm looking at something like there's four topics that people are talking about and on one of them there's 10 comments on the other one there's two comments um, I want to look at the 10 comment one first because that's probably more important because people are talking about it more. Yeah. Oh, this is R. I actually expected this to be Python. Um, nice. Uh, so Xavier said, can you please repeat the question? I'm still not 100% sure what the question is. Um, that's sort of what I'm, I'm figuring out here. Uh, and yeah, I think cosine uh, distance measure will probably be, be the best. So I'm trying to figure out what it is that I'm asking. I'm trying to figure out what my question is. Because um, basically, what I do now is I go through and I read all the forums and I note the things that people are asking and if there's like something I can help with quickly I, I jump in there and help people out but I want a way to sort of automate this so I can sort of like look at it more quickly uh Ryan says what if we did the average of topics word embeddings and then did k-means on it or something to find groupings that are similar yeah the problem with that is that you can have like it's possible that a few of things that are sort of highly dissimilar but longitudinal um or like uh, perpendicular to each other you're going to end up with the same sort of uh, mean for each um if you're if you're sort of like looking at it as a as a point in space i was using my hands for that i don't know um yeah no i i, I get what you mean i don't think it's a and that was that was not awful english yeah i think that's a it's an idea but yeah i think cosine similarity is going to be the thing that is most helpful here um and it is sim2 and we get okay so we're gonna need document term matrices um so these are the the object type that i believe snowball uses the text mining uh text mining thing uh, Xavier says, well, you can cluster comments with LDA. That's true. That's true. Uh, I, I remember, I remember reading the text effect is much better, um, um, optimized though. So it's going to be a little bit, a little bit faster, maybe. Mm, right. Uh, DTM, TDF, IDF, DTM, IT, vectorizer. All right. Um, so they do some cleaning of the document. And then they define two sets of documents for their distance model. And then, okay, so this is using a vector space comparison like uh, Xavier and Brian mentioned. So we need to define a to common space and project documents to it. We will use vocabulary based vectorization for better interpretability. So we can use this to vectorize the um, There we go. Uh, to vectorize the whole history of the forums. Uh, and the thing that it is called is... Scroll up. Uh, forums... Uh, let's just quickly pull up the head of the forums object just so we can see what it looks like. Yeah. For 
Abrams. Yeah, I think this is going to be a winner. Um, all right, so it's forums. For that's not how you spell forums, is it? It is not. Uh, and then it is title. Uh, and this is going to take a minute to run, I'm assuming. Error. Could Oh, right. You know what else helps with this is if you actually read in the library you're using. All right. All right, so that's going to take a minute. Oh, that was pretty fast. Uh, so that is for the whole space. And then we can compare our documents. So I think what I'm going to do here is, um, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm going to do this, but I think I'm going to do it the past week and then the past day. So maybe things that are most different, uh, for the past day. Uh, Ryan says, is this similar to your normal day to day and you just stream it on Fridays or is this a special project just for show? Um, yes and no. Usually for my streaming, I do things that are just for the streaming. Um, so you guys can see the whole process and it's not like, here's five I made earlier. Uh, today was a little bit of an exception. Um, but and streaming is also sort of like the things that I want to do that I just don't have time for during the work week. So, uh, yeah, it's just sort of bumping down my, my to-do list. But it's, yeah, I do this, you know, day to day. Depends on, depends on what's happening. All right. And then ID1, ID2, and the similarity of the document term matrices. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to tokenize them, and then we're going to have to create a document term matrix, and then we can do the... Um, Organize last day and last week. Uh, so let me scroll, 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 scroll. Um, so let's actually create a new object here that is uh, actually let's take the last month so we don't have too sparse of a data set. And then let's also take last day and let's do the last two days again so we just don't have have sparsity um it's minus 30. all right let's go let's go let's go, let's go. Uh, oops i need to go back here get these again so what i'm doing is i'm creating two sets of documents one from the last month and one from the last day Uh, so this is posts, I believe I called it. Yeah. Uh, so this is posts last month and I believe it's called title. Is it not called title? I think it's called title. Uh, and then here we are going to do, uh, post last day. Oh, it's not, um. Uh, yeah, yeah, I figured out why I didn't tab complete because I misspelled it. Uh, uh, All right, so those are tokenized, and then I need to create a document term matrix. Uh, Ryan said, "Do you have to do a stream showing the process you go through when prepping and evaluating a data set for competition?" Uh, I would not because I am not on that team. Um, but yeah, I can reach out to the competition team and see if they'd be be interested. Um, I think it's very different for each competition, though. So. I'm, I'm just sort of making shrugging hands, but you can't see it. Uh, okay. And then we create the document term matrix for each of them. And then we can do the similarity measure. Boop. Uh, and... Okay, those the matrices. Okay, sorry, so I'm just looking at these. Um, so 300 terms, 200. Okay, so these is, this is the number of documents that we have. 
Okay, 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 okay. So this way we can see where there is a high degree of unsimilarity. All right, let's try this. Uh, and then let's just look at the dimensions of that. So what I'm thinking is that we can then use this to find the things. Okay, so we only had 16 posts in the last two days. So we can find the posts with the highest cosine similarity. So similar measures are going to be higher or lower. It's not a proper distant metrics in the mathematical sense. It does not have the triangle inequality property and it violates the coincidence axiom. axiom. Uh, bag of words, each document is a sparse vector and we defined measure of overlap as angle between vectors. Okay, so um, more overlap is going to be Oh, okay, so it's the inverse. It's one minus the similarity. Um, Ryan says, I like Jensen for this stuff. Oh yeah, Jensen would have been a, a good choice as well. Uh, calculate similarities between all rows. Distance. I don't know whether a bigger number or a smaller number means higher away. <laughs> All right. Uh, cosine distance similarity bigger is farther away. All right. Cosine similarity is the measure of the cosine of zero degrees is one and it is less than one. Da, 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 da. Judgment of orientation, not magnitude. Diametrically opposed have a similarity of negative one independent of their magnitude. Cosine similarity is in positive space where the outcome is neatly bounded zero and one. Uh, da, 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 da. Technique, measure cohesion. Term cosine distance complement in positive space where DC is the cosine distance. Cosine similarity is important to notice. However, there's not a proper distant metric. Um, yes, that's the same thing that it said. One advantage is that it's low complexity. Only the non-zero dimensions need to be considered. Uh, it has other names. Uh, the angular distance metric. I think... Closer to one is going to be more similar. So the closer to zero it is, because it's they're not using the negative space here, uh, the less similar they are. That sounds right to me. Uh, one is perfectly similar. You can test by comparing a word to itself. Thank you. Helpful. Co cosine cosine similar similarity one is per perfectly similar. All right, one is perfectly similar. Uh, okay, so here we have a cosine similarity measure, and oh wow, it is after five. Uh, I'm gonna wrap up and see if I can't find uh, some dissimilar words. So the max is one. Okay, so something is completely uh, similar, and the minimum is zero, so something is completely dissimilar. Um, So let's look at all the things that are zero. Most things are zero. So noted. 
Um, so one thing that we can do is we can take the uh, rows column. So we can take the sum of each column. Uh, so this is its similarity to, so this is each comment this week and this is each comment this month and this is the similarity of each comment to each other comment. Um, so if we go down and we see if it's not similar, so you can see this comment here, the first one is similar to, or at least not completely dissimilar to whatever's in 89 and scrolling down, I don't see another one. Uh, but so if we take the column sum of this, it will tell us uh, something about the magnitude of similarity to all comments from the past month, if that makes sense. Uh, how do you take the sum of every column? Take the sum of, nope, of every column are uh, da, 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 call sums. There we go. Uh, so let's take call sums of this doodly boo. So this should be 16. Oh, are you not a, are you not a matrix? I thought you were a matrix. Uh, X dimensions I P okay so so this is it is a matrix but it is not an array so if we want just the array we are going to have to uh, uh, do some munging. Let's see. So we were, what were we doing just before here? So we were looking for where the similarity is zero and it was 559 by 16. 559 by 16. So these are the dim names and then the numbers are coming from dot dot dot. Ugh, okay. Uh, let's look at the documentation again and see if we can we can get this because I was expecting this to be a matrix and it is not. Doop, 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 doop. Were you what I was looking at before? Yes. Okay. Uh, it is, but see, it's, it is a matrix. It's a sparse matrix. So I guess I just have to give it one through. Okay, so I guess I just have to give it the dimensions. Uh, and it was 159 and 16. Uh, what was it? Call sums. And then the name of this. And then uh, you gonna work? No. Hmm. Okay, so is this not a matrix? It's a sparse matrix. Okay, so I need column sums of a sparse matrix. In R. Column sums sparse matrix in R. Uh, for objects, call sums sparse. The results may optionally be sparse too. Roll our column names. Uh, call sums. C sparse matrix. It should work. Uh, 
X must be an array of at least two dimensions. This is an array of at least two dimensions. Uh, Ryan says, is there a two dense in R? Hmm. R two dense. Sparse matrix two dense. That's a good question. Sparse matrix conversion. I have matrix, I have dummy variables, blah, 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 blah. But da da sparse model matrix. Uh, sparse M package. Let's try actually maybe as. What if we cast it to an array? See if that works. Yeah, that works. Uh, I'm Sharkskin says, huh, that's weird. I've been using call sums with the Spark matrices for past two weeks and never faced that error. I wonder if it's because it's the DCG matrix class, perhaps. Um, but it looks like if we cast it to an array, then we should be able to do call sums. No problem, maybe. A nice. Okay. Um, so you can see we have some. Looks like we have three very surprising topics, um, one, seven, and 16. And then we have some very unsurprising topics like two and four. Um, so I'm gonna call this, uh, distance from previous month. One is perfectly similar. Vector vector of sum of cosine distance from all previous topics in the previous month. All right, all right, all right. Um, DCG is the default name of sparse matrix from the matrix library, so I doubt that's the error. Uh, this is I am Sharkskin again. Um, yeah. Shrug, we figured it out. But yeah, I also have not run into this previously. Oh, all right. And then uh, let's take the post last day object. Post last day and let's call it distance and let's give it this distance from previous month. Oh, I haven't actually run the cell, huh? Uh, and then if we look at post last day, excellent. We should be able to see that, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm pleased with this. So we can see that this Russian comment that I don't know what it is, is completely dissimilar from all previous comments, which I think makes a lot of sense. Um, and we can also see this region coordinates comment is also very dissimilar from previous comments. Um, whereas we can see that this, uh, how to build a reasonably cheap DL computer under $500 without the card is fairly similar to previous comments. And then how to predict, ne predict next data from existing data in Python is also fairly, um, fairly similar to previous comments. So, uh, I'm going to... Find distance measure. Uh, yeah, so I think that works. And I think that is actually what I'm more interested in rather than a topic modeling approach. Um, and I'm just going to really quickly arrange. No, I do want it ascending rather than descending uh, based on distance. And then I'm going to look at head five. So whatever the most five most recent, uh, the five most surprising topics are. Um, so in uh, order, this is them. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to uh, select 
just two of these columns. I just want the title and the distance. And yeah. Oh, and it's not going to work if I don't finish my pipe, huh? There we go. Um, so these are the most surprising five comments, or the most surprising five comments from the last week, from the last three days without looking at, looking at the previous month, over the last three days, these are the most distinguishing comments. Um, and I am very pleased that this Russian one is first because there haven't been any other or very few other Russian comments. So it would make sense that this would be very dissimilar to things that we have seen previously. So I think that's a win. Um, look at the top five most dissimilar comments. Uh, yeah, Brian says, you'd think can't submit would be one of the most common jokes. Uh, yeah, but I think people tend to talk about, I mean, you can tell it was similar to some other things, but yeah. Okay, so I think we've pretty much done what we set out to do. Um, kind of. I think we didn't actually do any topic modeling. Uh, I am Sharkskin says, how is the cosine distance calculated term frequencies? I believe it is based on word to back embeddings um, in this particular uh, implementation. So it's the text to vec package. And I, well, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. It's memory efficient. It's performant. <laughs> Author is very obsessed with performance. Uh, it's by Dmitry Selevnov. So, um, yeah, so it is, it is in an embedding space. So it should be, it should be capturing something about semantics and topics, but yeah, no, that's a great question. Uh, yeah. So I have gone way over time, uh, but I got into it and I had a lot of fun. Um, and I, I'm going to call this a success. So, uh, and I'm going to actually rename this instead of calling it EDA, I'm going to call it what's up in the forums. Uh, and I'll commit that. And actually, I'm going to make this uh, public as well. So y'all can check it out if you have an interest. Uh, yep, and it should be committed. So uh, thanks for joining me. And I will be streaming every day next week at 9 a.m. Uh, talking about dashboarding and notebooks. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And I will see you guys then. Oh, no. All right. Well, now I have to clean up that tea I spilled. <laughs> uh, I'll see you guys on Monday. Bye.